Okay. <laughs> so uh, out there in video land, we all got excited that it's time and we're going live. Oh, okay, and there I am, live. All right, good. So um, one of you out there, not Gary, let me know that you can see and hear me. That would be great. <laughs> Of course, maybe only Gary is logging on. That's okay. You're on? You're the only one. All right, so you're on. So you can see me. Can you hear me? Can you tell if you can hear me? Um, all right, I'm talking, so, well, there you go. Okay, so Gary can hear and see me, so I'm assuming someone else who may join us will be able to see and hear me and that all that works out well. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, maybe you're all on your way here in person. That would be, yes, because the numbers of people who are actually showing up is growing all the time. So that's really cool, too. All right, so here we go. Let me see. Uh, let me move the camera so you're not looking at Reverend Rich. <laughs> While I'm doing a treatment, he's like sitting there, so ready to play. Uh, but you'll get to see him more later. All right. Oh, good. Debbie Joy. Hola. Yes. All right. Great. So, Debbie, you have won a spiritual mind treatment done by me. So let me know for what you would like me to do a treatment, and I will do that for you. One treatment, just uh, just type it in and email it to me, and I'll do that uh, absently. So anybody else want to check in? Nope. Okay. So let me do a spiritual <laughs> spiritual mind treatment. Robert Rich moved. Okay. Um, here we go. This word is being spoken for each one. And if there is anyone or any place on the planet that you would like to have included, just think of their name or that place right now and know that this word is also for them. So I recognize now that there is something, something that is right now creating the entire universe, making all that is seen and all that is unseen be. It is all an expression of this one infinite intelligent presence. Call it God, call it spirit, call it love, call it Jesus, Buddha, the name does not matter. It is the all in all, that one first cause from which all secondary causation as well as relative expressions emerges. This one source, one center, one presence is all. It includes everything that is created. So there is nothing outside of all. All is all. If anyone can think of something outside of all, all immediately increases to include, include that something. So all is, and in this all is, all that is. And all of its source, its supply, its ideas, its intelligence, its love, all of its substance is present and is taking form continuously. That form is this one I am in expression. No matter what is created, the I am center remains the same. And so it is recognized right now that this one I am, one source, one God, one cause, one creator, one all, is right where each one is. It is present within each one, expressing through each one. It is actually creating each one as its expression. And being human, it is creating each one as its great expression. Giving to this expression, it is creating a being that is able to choose, that is able to recognize this one source as all. It is creating this human, this one, to recognize it is one with all. 
and to participate in the expression of all that is in a positive, happy, and healthy way, in an exuberant expression, in agreement with the great affirmative of life, that I am life, and I am life expressing itself more and more abundantly. This is what the divine one self is expressing and creating each one now. And it, so each one being that creation and having the awareness of that perfect expression is now connected to this one presence, that one all, and knows that everything that is required to express this life as a human being on this planet here and now is provided by this one single source of all. That divine essence of life, being infinitely intelligent, knows how to take any form required or desired. It knows everything there is about how to function in human expression in this day, in this age, even with this technology. <laughs> because all, including the technology, is the creation of the divine. And so each one is now more aware of the presence of this self-existent essence and that it is always creating and so all distraction and all getting caught up in the relative, all uh, focusing and being addicted to observing the relative and any other kind of interaction in the relative that is based upon a belief that the relative is the creator, that the relative is cause, any belief or experience of being a victim of the relative is all erased, evanished, and gone in the realization that there is only one presence, that divine I am that I am, yesterday, today, and forever, that one great I am that I am, unchanging, infinite, and containing an infinite possibility to express itself. And it is operating continuously everywhere, and it is always operating right where each one is. So whether one is aware of it or not, feeling connected to it or not, or even believing it or not, this one first cause creator is now creating each one in its image and likeness and giving to each one the gift of choice, the gift of focus, the gift of being aware of any aspect of this life that he or she chooses. Each one now chooses being aware of this one presence, being aware of its qualities, being aware of it and it alone as cause. And so from this one cause, each one is experiencing it creating a perfect body, healthy, whole, and capable of expressing all the wonderful good that it desires to express through each one. Each one is being given now a body that is able to live and love and laugh and enjoy and walk and move and talk and have all the ability to express through this earthly plane all that is held within one's heart. This one causes creating for each one an environment that supports this healthy expression of life, an environment that is filled with the capability of, of becoming opportunities, wonderful opportunities of expressing the self, and an environment that is supportive of life and supportive of each one's expression of life at its highest. So each one is fully supported in expressing those unique gifts that have been given to them here in this planet in wonderful new ways, fully supported with the full backing of the universe, having enough wealth and money and abundance, enough energy and vitality, enough youth, 
enough vigor, enough good, enough love and, and wonderful supportive relationships, enough wonderful activities, and even seeing everything that is in existence operating perfectly all in support of each one expressing this life in a greater and more wonderful way each and every moment. And in all this, each one is given this gift of this one divine creator itself, all of its qualities, including its universal heart. And that universal heart is pure, wholesome, loving goodness that is loving itself and declaring I am that I am and bringing to and through each one and a greater experience of love, of giving and receiving this love, of being an active, eager, and in fact, enthusiastic participant in the expression of the circulation of love throughout all, the energy of love and joy throughout all. Each one partakes of it, participates in it, is a giver of all this, and an acceptor of all this. And as a result, each one is enjoying living this life and enjoying loving this life that he or she is co-creating with God itself, loving this expression of life completely. Because loving this expression of life completely is what the divine creator is always doing. Each one is in agreement with it, aware of it, recognizes it, accepts it, and allows it, gives it permission to inform and guide each one. And each one is an eager and willing participant in co-creating this experience of life, wonderful in every way. So this life works perfectly in the absolute and it works perfectly in the relative. Here now, this divine presence is here now, right where each one is and each one is aware of it and is now demonstrating increased wonderful harmonious supply in all things because of this awareness. I am grateful that this is truth. I release this word to God's law, grateful it's done, and we agree by saying, and so it is. heart is ready to receive so check in with your heart now and become aware of what your heart is ready to receive and know that somehow through this meeting through these people through this consciousness somehow that recognition of this one absolute truth of the all good can and does bring to each one a fulfillment of that which each one opens to in his or her heart. So let's be grateful for this and accept it, allow it, give it permission, give it access into your heart, and know that it will unfold in a wonderful way for each one of us. 
And I want to welcome you this morning to the Center for Spiritual Living Princeton. We are a loving, healing, inclusive community which teaches and practices the principles of the science of mind for our well-being of ourselves and the world. And so I am so glad that each one of you have been supplied with the means and the time to join us this morning. And I hope that you open yourself to the experience and are here for us. And it's the end of the year, so we have a lot of stuff coming up. So I just have a couple of announcements for you this morning. Evening Inspirations. This is the third week of the month, so there is no ins Evening Inspirations this week. However, we'll meet again next week on the 22nd. This is the day after the solstice, so we'll be talking about light. So I will invite you to join us for light. There's a Zoom link. You can find it on our Facebook page, and you can find it on our website. Next Sunday, next Sunday the 19th, is our annual <coughs> Giving Tree and Potluck Luncheon. And I invite all of you to come. It will start at 11.30. And understand that the hall we meet in has been rented to another group next week. So we need to be out of here by 1 o'clock. So we will be meeting, having lunch from 11.30 to 1. So if you're not planning to come in person to the service, but you're going to come afterwards, please make sure you come early so that you get to join in all the fun and all the fellowship and the food and, of course, the gifts. Because the giving tree is giving us gifts, as always. <laughs> and there is a mega supply of gifts. So there's enough for everyone. There's enough for more than everyone. So please come and partake. All you have to do is be welcome and open to receiving. And then on the December 31st, we invite you to our third year of celebrating World he Healing Meditation. On December 31st, 1986, Millions of people around the world gathered at the same time, noon Greenwich time, or 7 a.m. Eastern time, to participate in the most comprehensive prayer activity, a planetary affirmation of peace and love, forgiveness and understanding in a simultaneous global mind link. Its purpose continues to be achieving a critical mass of spiritual consciousness and usher in a new era of peace on earth. This event, created by John Randolph Price, along with his wife Jan, is an invitation for communities of individuals across the world to heal the sense of separation. The World Healing Meditation provides an opportunity to express oneness as millions of people join their voices in this prayer meditation. Practitioners John Heron, Susan Neat, and Damaris Oteras Torres will guide our community into this moment of spiritual alignment and communion. Our virtual room will open at 6.40 a.m and our healing world meditation event will start promptly at 6.45 a.m. with a spiritual mind treatment by Don Maurice Oterosaurus and a meditation led by Susan Nee. At 7 a.m., John Heron will lead us into the world healing meditation prayer joined by Susan and Don Maurice. The prayer will be read in English and Spanish. We will conclude the event with a spiritual mind treatment. So many, many opportunities also coming up towards the end of the year. We have our burning bowl. And we have uh, writing our letters to ourselves the first of the year. So many, many things, and I invite all of you to attend all of them. But this morning, I invite you to open yourselves and receive the message that you came for today. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am the love of God. 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 I am love. You are the love of God. 
center and we've been dwelling on and contemplating abundance so I did that this morning and I was reading some articles in the Science of Mind magazine about that subject and this quote of Ernest Holmes popped in to my consciousness and it was one that we discussed heartily in our practitioner training so I said I'm I meant to ponder this again There is no process of healing. However, there could be a process in healing. And I was trying to understand what that meant for me in terms of abundance or lack thereof. And it went on to say, Holmes meant that ultimately what we're healing, because the healing isn't about healing what appears, because we know we are perfect, whole, and complete in our union with God. But what we're healing is the sense of separation that we feel from our source. And Ernest Holmes said in this thing called you, there's only one God. There's only one mind. This one is undivided. Hence, all of it is present everywhere. God is not only where you are, God is what you are. So I thought it would be nice to meditate on that idea this morning. So I invite you to find that wonderful space of relaxation. Take a nice deep breath. Close those eyes if that's available to you. And just be. Be with that breath. And as that breath fills you, and now we know God is ever present. The breath is the breath of God. And that space that you are filling, that breath is helping you be aware that yes, God is there within and around and surrounding your body. But the breath helps you to get that sense So sit and breathe and feel that divine union. I am that I am.
And as you sit, I'm going to read some words of Ernest Holmes, and I invite you to embrace them as if they are your own. There is that within me which knows I am not only unified with this divine presence, this presence is my presence. This presence is my presence. It is the presence of my real and true self. I am forever a part of its being. The perfect law of God is operating in my affairs. There is no strain. There is no stress. Because I know that inspiration and guidance are mine. I permit myself to be moved by divine intelligence I lay aside any sense of burden or false responsibility. I lose all fear and uncertainty from my thought today. I release the veil of duality and affirm my union with the divine. I affirm my union with the divine. Today, I shall now live and think from this union which I already have. Today, I enter in to my kingdom of good. And as we sit, knowing this truth, I speak these words for each one here in any form in which they are here. Knowing that there is one, one life, one mind, and that each one is in divine union at all times with this one. Each one sits in the place of that most high, that recognition of unity. Each one dons that seamless robe of divine union, seamless, no beginning, no end, eternal, everlasting. So all that can be present is good. There is only peace, peace present in all areas of life. There is only harmony as the divine right order and divine right action are always in play, in poise. So each one in recognition of this divine center and this divine ideal, this divine presence in all things, each one rests in confidence. Each one is open-hearted to love, to the recognition of what is already present. And each one moves and breathes and has its being with that one. That union is experienced, that union is expressed, and that union is the birthright of each one. Peace, poise, harmony, love, life, ever present, eternal. And with love and joy and gratitude, 
knowing these words are true. I release them into the law, and we all say together, and so it is. Thank you. here, Arlene, and I guess that would also be Michael. Welcome. Glad you're here. And then also I want to add to Mary's uh, announcement about the New Year's Eve World Peace Meditation. Um, I plan on being present there in my pajamas. <laughs> so, you know, we'll be in our homes at 7 a.m. and get your little coffee or tea or hot cocoa or something. And you don't have to put on your video if you don't want anybody to see you. And also, there's a call-in number, so you could just call in to the Zoom meeting and be present with that. So uh, set your alarm for 6.30. You don't have to be any more awake than that. And um, come join us because um, we are blessed and benefited whenever we engage in a spiritual practice, thinking well of the world and of ourselves and of each other, right? So we come to the seventh plane of supply based upon the book Wells of Abundance by E.V. Ingraham. 
Although sometime in the new year, we will talk about a little added on essay at the, at the end of his book called The Law of Increase. I figured we would like that. Um, but that is a whole lot about tithing, so you might not like that, but there it is. Uh, but today we talk about supply in the absolute. And he writes, it may be a bit difficult for those unaccustomed to considering abstract things to grasp supply in its absolute sense. And it is a realization that one is more likely to grow into than to grasp offhand. But to those who can grasp it, it is the direct approach to both supply and health and love and good and everything. It centers upon the fact that cause and effect are one. And he is quoting something uh, if it is true of God, it must be true in manifestation. So he, he goes on. I'm going to read this little part here so we can see what we're aspiring to today. The individual attains the seventh plane of supply, which is supply in the absolute, only when he or she has expanded their consciousness to comprehend the universality of all things visible and invisible and has entirely lost the sense of separation. And I think that has been mentioned by others this morning. <laughs> there is no longer thee and me, God and man, there is only God. The highest consciousness of supply comes when you have so completely lost yourself in the infinite that you no longer think or speak as being in any sense apart from God and he quotes Longfellow, we no longer entertain our own imperfect thoughts and vain opinions, but God alone speaks in us, and we wait in singleness of heart that we may know his will, and in the silence of our spirits that we may do his will and do that only. Well, not easy to do. And I think that some of us or many of us may have had moments where we have that kind of identification with the divine, but this world we live in is just so interesting, <laughs> right? We are, uh, so let me explain. According to Judge Thomas Troward, we have... Uh, in a, let's think of it of uh, two poles, but one, the abstract or the absolute and the relative. And the absolute is that which is changeless, pure, like qualities, love, life. But these qualities express in the relative world. And so the relative world is always changing. So we see love always changing what we are experiencing and expressing in the relative world. But love in its infinite possibility and in its infinite fullness in its existence is still love. No matter what you yourself may be going through, that divine love is unaffected. You can think of it as the creator, unaffected by all that it has created. Thank God, Meryl says. <laughs> Thank God, you're not affected by all that we've done with what you've given us. Thank you so much. But we've all had that experience. When I was a child, I liked to play with paper dolls. Uh, many of you out there may not know what they are. <laughs> and may be amazed at the concept, but apparently we cut paper and pretended it was people and played with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but whether it was Play-Doh or Legos that you're working with, uh, as, as children, as adults, we can play with toys, we can arrange them in any kind of design, but we, the creator, is unaffected by it. 
I mean, sometimes we may get all involved and get mad and throw the whole thing out the window, but um, uh, that's because we've lost sight of who we are, right? So see, this absolute, the divine creator, is creating this entire universe and everything in it, but is unaffected by what it has created. But it is still what it is, and it is still creating. So it's enjoying creating. This one absolute something is intelligent. It doesn't create if it doesn't like what it's creating. That is something that we do in the relative, right? And that's what we need to understand, that we've been created to live on both planes. And this plane of action here on Earth, given a human body that is wired to feel emotion, that is designed to hurt when we bump into things, that this earthly body that is designed with a tremendous capacity to command our attention. We live in this. We've been given this. We've been given it for good. But when we are, you know, going astray from what is best for us, we bump into things. Our heart <coughs> hurts. Our, our, our toe hurts. Things hurt. And so we need to realize that that is an experience of the relative that in the relative world always changing, which our body is in the relative world, yeah, we bump into things. Uh, people leave us. It, our heart breaks. Stuff happens. We don't like the stuff that happens. I'm having to get a new TV set. Oh, my God. Please help me. Um, you know, and so in that process of the new TV, you know, I hate, you know, the cable company, and I hate the TV manufacturer, and I hate the Internet, and I hate the wiring in my house, and I hate the store that I bought the TV set from uh, because it's not working. And what in, in that human emotional interaction with stuff, change, doing what it does, which is change, I'm having an experience, but uh, I'm totally sucked into the relative. Didn't somebody say sucked into it? We get sucked into it? I don't know. Somebody said it. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody said it to me. Okay, so we get sucked into the relative and we immediately are separated from the absolute. It's, it, it's as if it's not there. And what we need to understand in the wells of abundance to really master infinite supply always supplying us with wealth and with abundance as well as every other good thing we have got to dedicate ourselves to remembering the absolute that first cause essence and this is not for the any every once in a while mood that you might be in. It is for always. And so I have permission to share this story. One of our people, a year ago, her husband was given a diagnosis that uh, had a life expectancy of one year. And she lives this teaching, she embodies this teaching, and she knew she had to take a stand and never waver from it. She knew that she had to take that stand and not allow anything that's going on in the relative to affect that stand, that position of first cause creation. And so she made that commitment. She took that stand. And this past week, I received a phone call from her. I was grateful I was the first one she got to talk to because she just burst out her gratitude for this teaching, for all that she had learned. And 
she wanted to share with us. She said that she has the conviction of experiencing the evidence of her own healings. Something like that. She has the conviction of having proved if you stay in the absolute and demand that all good manifest, it works. But what she was very clear about was she worked in her consciousness. And I don't think that um, if there's anything in your life that, say you've asked for treatment for, um, and, and maybe it's a, a thing that has not yet unfolded, uh, I ask you how, how much have you personally worked in consciousness to accept this for yourself. She said that she visualized three times a day her husband's perfect health. She said sometimes she imagined getting on the phone calling me and saying, hey, he's healthy. Um, she said that she did it three times a day and it wasn't always perfect. Her spiritual practice wasn't always perfect, but she did it because she knew what was at stake. And she wanted it that badly that she was willing to make that commitment. And so there may be something in your life that you, that you want and you've dealt with for years and years and years, decades, maybe your whole life, whatever it is. But if it hasn't demonstrated, you haven't made that kind of commitment that she did. And I know what she's talking about because I've, I have done that a few, a few times too. Uh, a cat was diagnosed with diabetes and I'm like, I'm not going there. No, from the moment the vet said it. He said, well, you know, in some cases it got, disappears. And I said, I'll take that one. That's it, I'm taking that one. And I got to work, but I, this was, this was the demand to know the truth in the midst of having to deal with the medical stuff, giving her insulin and, you know, trying not to hurt her with the needle and all that sort of stuff and the tests, blah, blah, blah. To stay knowing the truth with that, it's not easy. But I knew what was at stake. And the invitations throughout those two, it was two months I had to work and then it was all gone. But the and. And the improvement wasn't immediately obvious at the beginning, but eventually I started seeing it. But the thing is, is that to uh, go through this process, your mind keeps giving you invitations to settle for less. And I remember um, I had to give her insulin shots every 12 hours, and I was like looking at my schedule, and some days I have to leave at 8 a.m., and some days I'm not home until 10 p.m., and I'm like, there's no 12 hours that I can consistently do with this animal. This doesn't work for me. And I, I remember the invitation to like try to figure out how to make this work. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna try to figure out in the relative world how to make this work because this is not true in God, the absolute. Therefore, I need to get back in God unseparated until this condition is gone and it was difficult I had those of you who were practitioners at the time you were all assigned the job of treating for my cat and my personal practitioner was assigned the more difficult job of dealing with me and my consciousness and I did the work I did what was guided to do I had to treat every single time before I gave her that insulin shot and I, every time I had to measure her sugar count or do the shot, I had to, especially measuring that sugar thing, I had to say, this is just a measurement of how much more God I need to know. It's nothing else. And I had to say that to myself consciously. So, so there we are, you know, several times a day, every time I interacted with this animal, I had the choice and I may have done it imperfectly, but I did what I needed to do as best as I could. Cat was healed. 
total I know. And and uh, you, the husband is healed. Perfect health. Because in the absolute, what is true of God is also true of us. But if we're separated from God, we don't experience what is true of God. <clears throat> and maybe our egos wants to think that we are one with God, but probably we're not especially if something in your life like my tv set is not working there's there's more god to connect to 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 stand true to she also said one other thing and so we have to give credit to reverend dr kennedy schultz for saying this many years ago if you're going to put god first in your life make sure you have a definition of god that you want to put first. Your belief about God is everything. And it, and it becomes your whole world. So if you believe God is all good, but not so much here. If you believe God is all good, except uh, not when you do that. If you believe God is all good, except uh, with all those other people who, you know, misbehave, whatever. Um, that's not, that's missing the goodness of the all God. If you believe that there's a God that uh, sometimes likes you and sometimes doesn't, is that a God that you want to put first? If you believe in a God that's testing you to see if you're worthy or not, is that a God that you want to put first? If, if, if you believe in a God that's sometimes with you and sometimes too busy with other people, is that a God that you want to put first? I mean, really think about if you're going to put an, uh, something, someone, some essence first in your life, do you like what you believe it to be? As children, right, we're taught authority. We have to put authority first over our own inclinations, listen to what the authority, obey what it says, da 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 da. And we don't like our authority. But listen to the authority, right? So at some point we mature and we have to ask ourselves question. I have always listened to my parents. I have always listened to the teacher. I have always listened to the clergy person. I have always listened to these people who intended my good. But are they wise always? Do they know me and what's in my heart? Do they have even my best interests in mind? Are they filled with their own need for healing, their own stuff, right? And what we come to uh, realize at a certain point when we, when we begin a spiritual journey is everybody is definitely doing their best, but only we ourselves are in charge of our own lives. I am responsible, 100% responsible for what is created in my world. And likewise you. And so I could be separated from God and I have to work really, really hard with my limited knowledge and understanding uh, to do good and Hopefully, you know, I'm good enough that my life has lived well and, and that works. But it doesn't cover all. All. Because all is only God. And so when we come up with this conception of the all, it has to include good. Dr. Ernest Holmes, it's just so interesting. In the science of my textbook, you can read it from cover to cover, every word. There's one name for God that he never writes until he gets into his little appendix where he has the little prayers for self-help. And in these cute little four, five sentence prayers, he uses the name of God as all good seven times. God, the all good. Is this the God you believe in? Or is it all good except, 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 except? All good. And so what we 
want to understand from Ingraham, Ingraham is wherever we believe the all good is not is where we are separated. And that's just it. And, we, and so we need to mental, right? Ernest Holmes says, right? Um, uh, who, can, who can say the quote? That um, nothing is gained without spiritual mental coin. Nobody remembers it. Oh, yeah. All bold in the book. Okay. It's not something for nothing. But that we earn the consciousness by mental and spiritual effort. And that is what Ingraham is telling us. He said, uh, train yourself to feel saturated with the wealth of the universe. Revel in the sense of infinite wealth that flows toward you, surrounds you, fills you. Let nothing, even the condition of poverty itself, dim your realization. And, and there is no exceptions and there is no mood that you're in or emotion that you're feeling or anything happening by anybody else. There is no excuse for not standing true in the absolute or what is true of my God. This person who manifested this tremendous good, your practice, she said that her, she got that message. She really got it when I taught it in a class uh, probably 20 over 20 years ago she said that she she got it if i'm going to put a god first in my life i better have a belief in god that i want to put first and she concocted she created a definition of god that she wanted to put first and it was this definition that carried her through this year from the very beginning she said my god would not do this to me my god would not have us change our lives, retire, move to another state. My God would not do all this good and then take it all away. Her God would not do that. Would your God do that? That's, that's what we have to ask ourselves. Would your God? I know that one thing that I have to affirm, but I, if I, when I remember it, right? When I remember it, I really believe it. I, I really believe. My God has carried me this far. My God will take me the rest of the way. My God will not let me down. But it's interesting how often I have to remind myself of that because this relative world is just so interesting. And I, I, I admit, I love being with friends and saying, oh, you know what happened to me? And every time I do it, that divine wisdom within me is going, what? What are you saying? Will you shut up? That's why my divine wisdom guidance, it almost always says to me, shut up. But the temptation, you know, because somebody had something happened on their drive home and I had something happen on my drive home. I want to share what happened on my drive home. It was just so interesting that there was a car in the woods with its lights on. What was that? Do I want to drive along lonely roads and see cars in the woods with their lights on? No. There's a story there. There's a story there. There's a story there. You get to make it up. <laughs> so years ago, I was posting on Facebook, I'd be driving to dance class, and I'd love going through this particularly woody, very uh, isolated place. Couple of, couple of homes there. And, you know, I mean, it's really a strange little half a mile of stretch of road. So I'm driving along during Christmas time, this time of year. And I was looking at these three houses that are there in this little stretch of woods. And they had their lights up and they were just so pretty. And in one of the houses, there was a man standing right at the window looking at me. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> Stand by. Okay. You know, because I was driving slow and I was looking at the decorations. But anyway, it was just a little weird, but I'm like, okay. So I drove home and he was there still. 
in the same spot looking at me. So I'm like, you know, putting it on Facebook, everybody's saying everything, oh my God, what is it, blah, 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 blah. And for weeks I'm going by and he's standing there and he's, and he's like always there, like right up to the window. I think he had like binoculars or something and he was just standing there looking out or whatever. So after a couple of weeks of in this experience and enjoying it, uh, whoever lives there moved whatever it was. And it was a cardboard, cardboard cutout of a man. <laughs> But how interesting, right? And all my Facebook people, oh, how interesting, how interesting. But the thing is, is it was scary, it was weird. And where's my belief in God in all that? I mean, it wasn't like I was saying there's no God, right? But there was no, there was no, <laughs> there was no absolute God, the all good there. It was Karen enjoying the little thrill of someone staring at her, you know, like he knew who I was driving along, you know, please. I mean, really, it, beyond, beyond human belief, but many of you who are my Facebook friends got caught up in it too. You know who you are. And the thing is, is that life does that. It's the relative world. Let's face it, we're given a body with senses. It attracts our attention all the time. But in getting the wells of abundance, the consciousness of being fully supported all the time, we have got to take a stand. And whenever we do take that stand and stick with it as best we can, but stick with it three times a day, every day for a year, Wherever I have done that, I have demonstrated freedom, healing, everything changing. Wherever I have not done that, sometimes I've experienced total healing. Um, an imp definite improvement. But in those areas that I have treated for, off and on, when I'm in the mood, once a year, when it's the new year, when I'm in a good mood, when I remember it, um, every once in a while, I realize that the areas that have not completely healed, maybe improved step by step, um, I haven't made that same kind of commitment. I just haven't. Well, it's not life and death. Ah, who cares? It's not that bad not having a working TV at the moment. It's not that bad. My upstairs TV works. That's good enough. I could probably go like that for a while. Why? Underneath that is an unconscious, but now we're very conscious of it, right? An unconscious belief. There's no God here in the TV set. There's no God with the uh, particular cable company. There's no God in the manufacturer of this thing. There is no God in, you know, credit card companies. There's no God there. That's there, unspoken by me. But what is unrecognized by me is the presence of the all good. So that's the spiritual work that we have to do when um, that increment, he says, you know, uh, it may be a bit difficult. Um, the mind schooled to appearances does not readily grasp this. Such a mind trying to apply this logic that I have just spoken creates a conflict in one's nature and confusion and vague uncertainty results. This kind of uh, talk is disturbing to us because we know what we're doing and yet we believe we are unable or powerless to change ourselves. But that's why I love when we have someone in our community who does the work um, and, and comes to speak it. I want everyone to know that this works if you work it, but you've really got to work it. And you've got to have that definition of God. 
That's what she said. You've got to have a good definition of God and you have got to do the work. And that's it. And if you do it, even though it's imperfect, it will work. I, I was drinking it up, going and writing my notes of, of all that she's saying. What'd you say? What was that quote? What did you say? Okay, right. I mean, notes, notes, post-its all over the place. Because that's all I had in front of me was post-its. To get all this, this practical application of this teaching in an area that is considered incurable, impossible, can never happen. And so our faith is built on what other people demonstrate and share, right? My faith got built that day. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so I had that phone call on what, Tuesday, Wednesday? I forget when it was, but I will have to tell you, I have yet to sit down three times a day and claim my all good. Hello? Because, you know, I'm still thinking about it. What should I do all that for? Hmm, what should I do, right, whatever? I know, that's the tough one, you know. Well, if you're talking about, you know, life or death, okay, that's easy, but, you know. These simple things like stopped up drains. So, so we, so we want to think about this. But most important, we want to think this week about our definition of God. Let's upgrade it. Let's upgrade it to a God that's even more wonderful than what we had been claiming before. And her statement, my God would not do this to me. My God is all good. My God is love. My God would not do this to me. And then my statement, my God, it brought me this far. It will not dump me. My God, with the one thing that I like to say along those lines is, my God does not set me up for disappointment, for failure, for whatever. My God does not set me up. So whatever works for you, your idea of God, let's bump it up a little good bit because we know no matter what our belief in God is, it could be more. Because if there's any area in our life that is less than love, grace, ease, peace, poise, intelligence, whatever, that's where we have a separation in our belief of God. So let's think about that during... Reverend Rich's playing of music. Let's think about our definition of God and come up with an improvement we would like to make to our God. And then I'll come back and we'll do a, I'll do a treatment that we get it, that we believe it. So let's do that now. Reverend Rich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, it's, and those things go along good. Wait that night, right? Oh, I can't wait to get started on this. Then two weeks go by, three weeks, and you go, ah, you know, just this once. I've been so good. In this moment, in this place, I remember who I am. When I fear and worry, fall away from me. I open my eyes and see There is only love There is only love Love that is Love will set us free There is only, only love When I lose Myself, when I feel I've lost my way, then I go inside to quiet my mind. I can hear spirit gently say, There is only love, there is only love. Thank you. 
So that's a good definition for God, only love, only love. So this word is being spoken for each one. The truth is only love is present, that divine presence, the all good. And each one is now receiving an idea of its greatness, of its glory, of its goodness, a new idea, something new to add to the package of what one believes, something that is more empowering, more inspiring, that is more of an inspiration that can support each one in living this earthly realm expression of life in a happier, healthier, more joyous, free, even intelligent and loving way than ever before. And so each one is opening now and receiving a greater idea of the I am that I am, something more, so that each one is more connected to this loving presence than he or she has ever been before. And as a result, each one's world in the relative is changed for the better. This word is the truth. I'm glad it's truth. So I release this truth to the law of God, which is all good and which knows how to make it so. It makes it so. It's a done deal. And so it is. And that's the way it is. Take us up. And that's it. That wraps it up. So all of you out there in virtual... Oh, Stephanie Wonder. So she says, yes, my God has carried me this far, and my God will take me the rest of the way. Yes, people like that. Margit agrees. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So that is excellent. Hello, Robert. I think I said hello to everybody else who signed in. Um, have an absolutely wonderful day, a day that your God would make, and um, enjoy it. And so it is.